Daniel Radcliffe turned me gay. Turned me gay. It's not even that I have a lesbian radar either. I will literally cry right now. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be watching a movie that has actually been requested quite a bit and it is one of my favorite movies and we're going to be watching Love, Simon. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you know that I've done many videos on Love, Simon. I've done like trailer reactions. I did like three videos on the actual movie, but I've never actually done a movie commentary on it because this was before I actually did movie commentaries. So even though I have a bunch of videos on my thoughts about the movie already, I decided I would do it again because it's been like two years since I've done those videos and I've only watched the movie a couple times since. So I'm revisiting it. I haven't watched it in a while, so I'm really excited to. This is one of my favorite movies. I read the book. I followed the premiere and whatever when it was being released and the trailers and all the sneak peeks and everything. I went to one of the early releases where like Nick Robinson showed up and I was like, oh my God, like, wow. It was like Nick Robinson came out and said like, hi, I hope you guys enjoyed the movie. And then he left and then we watched the movie. So that was worth the drive, I guess. I don't, I don't really know. This movie also has a lot of issues. So we will talk about the issues because I feel like when I first watched it, I was really blinded by my just overall love for it and I didn't want to say anything bad about it. But we're going to be getting into everything about it. I'm going to be talking a lot during this. So yeah, this is really fun. Oh, I also have my Love, Simon thing right there. My Love, Simon record. I'll show you. And behind it is the Crazy Rich Asians one, which just fell. This is my Love, Simon record. It's red. What a beautiful movie already, I'm just saying. My dad was the annoyingly handsome quarterback who married the hot valedictorian. Jennifer Garner as Nick Robinson's mother, that is beautiful. I didn't read Leah's book, so don't hold that against me, I didn't read it. <laughs> I heard there was issues with though. For some reason, when I feel like I, when I think about Leah, I think about like the issues on Twitter about it that people were complaining about. Something happened, I don't, I don't remember what it was, but there was issues. If it isn't my fellow thespians. <laughs> Hey, Martin. Hey, Spear. Martin never developed as a character. Like, it was like, he never became likable throughout the entire thing. Never. There was never a moment where I was like, oh, you did some pretty bad things, but you know, you're actually pretty cool. Like, it was just like, you suck. I'm sorry. Like, you can't come back from that. That was just not okay. I just, I just love it. Like, I feel like it is such a nice coming of age story. And I really, I really love it. The reason he couldn't get the email in school is because the person who's easy emailing is also in school and they got a no phone policy at school. So if he got caught on his phone, his phone would have gotten taken away. As for how I knew I was gay, it was a bunch of little things. Like this one recurring dream I kept having about Daniel Radcliffe. Shit, there's something about those glasses that'll do something to you. And then proceeded to have every night for a month. Hot take, Daniel Radcliffe turned me gay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to Gmail, and it pulled up your account, and I uh, read some of your emails. I know I probably shouldn't have, but they were like, right there. <laughs> so you'll be interested to know my brother's gay. You fucking suck. You like actually suck, and I don't know. No. What a hateable character. You're wonderful, you're so hateable. Top 10 characters that I would literally punch in the face. Top 10 characters who are Trump supporters. Martin. You said it, not me. Hizzy means house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, Abby, you look amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you look you look awesome. I, uh, I'm i gonna go make those frozen pizzas. <laughs> She's catching feelings. Someone's catching feelings for Abby, and I see it with mine eyes. See, if you don't have the lesbian radar, you just can't sense it. It's not even that I have a lesbian radar either. 
I just prefer it when they're lesbians in the movies and stuff. Like, I want it. I want more lesbians in movies and stuff, you know? Like, I don't think that there's enough. Love me. I'm gonna be starting. We could be hungry. Him singing a Justin Bieber song and his dog's name is Bieber. Hidden Easter eggs in Love, Simon with Trin Lovell. Do, but something won't let me make love to you day after day. That's my least favorite thing is when there's like a karaoke scene in a movie and someone's like, that's so embarrassing. And it's like, who goes to karaoke to expect someone to sing nice? If you sing nice at karaoke, I actually want you to stop. No one's allowed to sing anything good at karaoke. You're supposed to sing bad. That's the rules. There's one rule of karaoke and it's to not say the N word. That's a rule in life, but it's to not say the N word and also not sing well. Roof stop spinning. Do you ever feel weird? Weird? Yeah. This was a beautiful straight baiting moment. Sometimes I when feel they like put I'm this in the trailer and you think that like, oh my god, is he in love with her? What you my aesthetic, straight baiting. <laughs> yes. Anything to fake anyone out that there's be a heterosexual couple when it's not actually heterosexual. And they're both actually gay. Oh, remember when he thinks it's the waffle house employee for no reason? That is one of the most bizarre moments in the movie. Where it's just like, the waffle house employee goes out for his break. And then all of a sudden, we're like, it could be him. Like. No. Abby Suso and an incredible young woman and deserve... A goddamn superhero. I'm I'm not gonna say that line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um I won't stop until you say it. Okay. As much as this scene was great for Abby, I w it's great. You know, wonderful. It seemed a little much. You know, and it seemed like it was trying to make Marvin into a more developed character, which I didn't like. And it was like a very quick part to make you sympathize with Abby and to know more about her character and why she moved and why she's a new friend. But it's not enough because they drop it so quickly about what happens to her and her backstory. And then she becomes a side character again. So for in this moment, it's focused on her. We're shining a light on her story so quick after it's she's back in the shadows and whatever. So it seemed like pointless to me. Would you believe I'm considering doubling down and turning this whole awkward mess into a coming out thing? Do you think I'm crazy? No, Blue, I don't think you're crazy. I think you're crazy brave. I think you're crazy brave. I will literally cry right now. Shut the fuck up. This song literally makes me want to ball my eyes out. Honestly, Martin used to annoy the crap out of me, but he's actually kind of- I literally love this song so much, and Troy wrote it for this movie, and I just like- I love Troy, he's one of my favorite artists ever. Top artist, like, of all time. Love all of his songs. When I heard that he wrote a song for Love, Simon, like, my heart was, like, so warm. Like, it is just, like- It is such a beautiful song, and it makes you feel so- It almost makes you feel, like, nostalgic, or, like, you feel like- I feel like it just feels- I feel like I feel like I feel like it just it feels like a high school romance song and I love it so much it makes you feel like you're in love in high school and it's just a wonderful feeling like how does Troy do that I don't know but it's such a beautiful song and I love it for this movie you can't tell anyone though nobody really knows and I don't really want people to find out I won't I promise <laughs> You surprised? No. So you knew? No. But you're not surprised. Do you want me to be surprised? I don't know. Okay. Well, I love you. So. 
I can't express how much I love the coming out scenes in this movie. I don't know why. It just... They really are beautiful coming out scenes in this movie. Like those lines of like, so you're not surprised. Do you want me to be surprised? Like, did you know? No, but I'm not surprised. It is just... It's comforting in a way. Like, the way they wrote the scene, it shows this comfort that he feels from her. The normalization of it all. It, I just... I literally feel like I'm being hugged when I watch that scene because it's such a beautiful scene. Nick just asked me to get dinner before the homecoming game. Okay. No, like, <laughs> sigh. He was like, he came up to me and he's like, do you want to go get dinner? Right, and I was like, sure, or Abby and Simon. And he mm -hmm. was like, I was thinking it could just be the two of us, like a date. That's amazing. <laughs> it is? I hate, one of the parts that I hated about Leah was that she got mad at Simon for not realizing her feelings. And he wasn't just setting her up with Nick to be mean or cruel. It was like, he actually believed she liked him and he thought this was gonna be a win-win situation for everyone. Like Martin and Abby were actually starting to not hate each other or Abby was not hating Martin anymore. Nick and Leah could have been together and he would have not had his secret shared out through the school. Like for him in his mind, he was like, this is a win-win situation for everyone. You not only transferred into a new school, you transferred your way into a new heart belonging to me, my heart, right here. And whether it was being your partner in Pong, or your Waffle House warrior, I have cherished the 135,300 minutes. That Cut that romantic music off right now. Shut it off, shut the fuck up. I don't wanna hear it. I don't even wanna pretend that it is romantic. Dove launch. I was hoping for, but uh, still uplifting to free some birds. Okay, uh, fuck Martin. Can I get a good old fuck go. Martin? He deserved it. The rat gets what he deserves for doing that. That's what you get. Karma bites back when you try to blackmail people. I know you're going off the grid and you won't see this until you're back, but something's happened. You're going to find out who I am. And someone posted our emails. Please don't freak out. Please, Blue. I need you to promise me you won't disappear. Oh my god. I can't even, I can't even deal with it. I literally can't even deal with it. And this is where they all gang up. And instead of comforting him, instead of comforting him when he's going through this hard time, they yell, they decide to gang up on him and yell at him. And talk about how bad of a human being he is for hurting their little feelings. Oh, boo-hoo, me, Abby and Nick couldn't get together sooner. You are awful, you suck. Oh, you didn't reciprocate my feelings, Simon. Uh, he screenshotted my emails and he's been using them to blackmail me for months. What does that have to do with us, Simon? It, are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you really dumb? Do you not understand it? Like, it doesn't- wh Why did they even include that line? Like, what does that have to do with us? I mean, I think it has everything to do with you, dumb shit. Like... And that's why you convinced me to go on that date with Leah? You're gonna keep me away from Abby? So, wait, running lines at Waffle House and beer pong at Bram's, all of that was just to pawn me off on Martin? I'm not a piece of meat, Simon. You know how hard it was for me to start over. You guys are the worst friends I've ever seen in a movie, ever. Worst friends on f film. In the history of film, worst friends, like. You, gotta, you, you know what, you're insanely stupid, Simon. I was never in love with Nick. I was in love with you. I can deal with you being gay, Sai. But you set me up to get my heart broken when you thought I was in love with Nick, and that just makes you cruel. Pause. I have so much to say. How could they write these characters to be such pieces of shit? I don't get it. How they could possibly make me think that I should sympathize with Leah, Nick, and Abby in that moment. When she literally said, you just set me up to get my heart broken and that's just cruel. He literally thought you liked Nick. That wasn't, that wasn't something that he was scheming. That he literally thought that. He literally thought that you liked Nick. 
That wasn't some game he was doing. That wasn't something that he was trying to get you off of his back because you were in love with him. He literally thought that. The whole thing with Abby, he was being blackmailed by someone that was about to out him. They, I, you don't like me because you're gay? Fuck you. Like, I don't understand how they could all set this up to be like, you know, fuck you. Like, they just literally, they on the corner of the street, just like waiting for him to come out of his car to be like, fuck you, you piece of shit. You're so stupid. You're so dumb. Why would they do that? Like, they set that up to make me feel like, oh, Simon's a bad character. Not at all. Simon Warriors right here. We're here for Simon and Bram, and those are the only two characters that matter. Only two characters. And his parents. That's it. Everyone, get out of here. Because you don't deserve rights at all. That scene sucks and it makes me so angry. Every single time I watch it, it makes me angry because I don't know how you could write that and actually think that like, <laughs> like I don't understand it. I don't understand how you could write that scene and make it make anyone think that we should be sympathizing with anyone other than Simon at this moment in time. Oh, Simon. Hey, can we talk? Oh my, one of the best scenes know, ever. It right. made me please, so please, happy. I, I just the relief I had okay, I, in it. Beautiful. Honestly, mwah. cinematic history right here. This is amazing. Shit like that. And I, I got a lot of shit for homecoming. And I wanted everyone to focus on something else. You know, I, I just didn't think it was going to be a big thing. It's, I don't care if you didn't think that my coming out was going to be a big thing, Martin. I'm supposed to be the one that decides when and where and how and who knows and how I get to say it. That's supposed to be my thing. And you took that away from me. So look, can you please just get the fuck away from me? Wow. Such a wonderful scene. Fuck you. That's supposed to be my thing. I'm supposed to be the one that decides where, when, how, and who gets to know. That's supposed to be my thing. I would literally die for this movie. Like if you can, you can say everything else before this movie, like the whole movie before sucked, but these moments right here, like they, they're, I'm already about to start crying because no. I really love this scene. <laughs> I mean, when you were little, you were so carefree. But these these last few years, more and more, it's almost like I could feel you holding your breath. Being gay is is your thing. There are parts of it you have to go through alone. I hate that. As soon as you came out, you said, Mom, I'm still me. I need you to hear this. You are still you, Simon. You are still the same son who... <laughs> I love to tease. And who your father depends on for just about everything. And you're the same brother who always compliments his sister on her food, even when it sucks. <laughs> I am crying. <laughs> you guys can't make fun of me. But you get to exhale now, Simon. <laughs> You get to be more you than you have been in, in a very long time. <sighs> you deserve everything you want. <laughs> I'm not a pretty crier either. I don't even need to say anything about that scene. Because these tears, these tears say it all. 
these tears say it all for that scene, I'll tell you that. This is it, right here. Love Simon, how Love Simon made me feel. I'll be crying. And there's nothing wrong with that if you started crying too, because that was, you get to exhale now, like I literally, <laughs> Hey, no, Ted. No, those stupid jokes. I know you didn't mean them. It doesn't matter. I shouldn't have missed it. In case the message got lost somewhere, I just... I just want you to know that I love you. And I'm really proud of you. I wouldn't change anything about you. Shit, Ted. Hey, stop crying. I'm trying. Just, I can't. I, there's not a lot of movies that make me cry, but god damn, this one. Hey, Simon. Hey. Do you want to go to the carnival with us tonight? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Yay. Yeah. I don't think you guys are forgiven by me. I don't forgive you yet because you suck. I have makeup all over my white sweater now because I was a dumb bitch that decided to wipe my tears with my white sweater. Yeah. We got it. Woo. This is it. I did hate in the movie that it was everyone watching. I really wish it was just between him and Bram. For me, it just kind of ruined the intimacy of the moment. I felt like it was supposed to be a really intimate romantic moment between Simon and Bram, but it turned into a grand gesture type of style, public PDA type of thing, which I didn't really enjoy. I liked it when in the book when it was very, when he just knew it was him, you know? It wasn't like, hey, everyone come up to my meet and greet. Last call for the Ferris wheel. Oh no, I can't watch. I can't watch this, babe, no. That's why you guys shouldn't have fucking come. I'm just saying. It's supposed to be an intimate moment. Can I sit there? I was kind of waiting for somebody. Yeah, I know. You're a little slow there, babe. You're a little slow. He's slow with his mind and you're slow with the timing, to be honest. You're a little late. Both of you, a little slow on both ends. This movie, there's something about this movie that hits different. It's like the first half of the movie, you're kind of like, the last half of the movie, you're like, shit. Just makes you feel like, I don't know. Oh, Simon. I don't like the cheering. I don't, I don't like the cheering. I wish it was just them. I never liked the thing. I never liked the part that they were doing in front of everyone. It just made it seem, I don't know. Just didn't, I didn't like it as much. My God, I love them. I love this story. Hey, how you doing, Leah? Good, you good? And he's still driving you to school after all you put him through. And it turns from four coffees to one coffee to five coffees. So. Morning. Morning. Everybody in? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. It's too beautiful a day, so I think I'm gonna actually take us on a little adventure. Yeah. Yes! Exactly what Why I do I love this movie so much? I really love this movie so much. I can understand why people don't like maybe the beginning part. It kind of seems like a more cliche coming of age story it doesn't seem like there's much depth to it I do you think they messed up a lot of parts especially comparing it to the book like I said on the ferris wheel with the lack of in intimacy because with the crowd and whatever like I didn't like that I don't like the stuff with the friends um I can't remember if the friends got like that angry in the book I don't think they did um Still, it wasn't my favorite part. I would really recommend if you haven't seen it and you're just now watching my commentary on it, you should watch it on its own. And specifically Jennifer Garner's speech. I keep coming back to it because I think it is a wonderful scene for every single teen to watch, whether you are gay or not. I think what she says just, it feels, after you listen to it, it just resonates with you. 
like you get to exhale you get to be you and I just think that is such a beautiful speech that she did and I think it was really well done um yeah so as you know I really like this movie I do understand that there are a lot of flaws in it and I won't deny that thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and comment down below your thoughts on love Simon in the comment section down below or if you read the book or not because I read the book and I personally like this book adaptation some people didn't like it some people said it didn't compare well to the book I thought it compared pretty well to the book obviously it wasn't the same in every single aspect but I think it still had that really um that core energy of the book, which is what I liked. And the core energy of Simon, which is I really liked. I really liked it that Simon stayed Simon through the book and through the movie. So yeah, make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Instagram at Level and Twitter at leveltrin. Make sure you subscribe so you can see more videos from me and turn on the notifications bell as well if you wanna like to be notified every single time I post a video. That is it, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.